was. It was after the year that my father passed away. And the reason that it was significant that I go on and I try and do a lot with them is because uh, he made Christmas um, tradition with them. And prior to that year, um, we had a big tradition where our family um, would, my dad used to own his own video and electronics store. And even before the age of Facebook Messenger and FaceTime, um, my father had set it up so that we could use our internet connection for him to be able to video in and see the kids open their Christmas gifts. Obviously, uh, the the video quality wasn't such that it, it went to be. But with a lot of lighting, he felt like he was right there. Um, so he would be able to watch the kids open their gifts as if he was there. And, um, you know, the kids video chatted with him all the time. You know, we did our tradition with him and he would almost be right there. Um, the reason why it was important for me to get all that they received is because my father, as a single parent, my father made sure that they were taken care of holiday wise. And that left me to ensure that I always focused on running the household and making sure they had some clothes and making sure there was food on the table. And so this was going to be their first year without him in the traditional way that we did Christmas. So what else do you remember about that year, Justin? Uh, we had a lot of traditions that we did. We would uh, go see Christmas lights. Uh, Helped out with, um, you know, with the homeless. We did a lot. We just did a lot of um, community stuff. Exactly. So, just to kind of give you guys a quick backstory, my father, my grandfather, my father's dad, my grandmother, my father's mom, my um, two aunts, my father's sisters, as well as my dad, all died on Christmas. It's not that they all died in one big tragic, uh, you know, Christmas event. It was over the, you know, several years. And the reason is because of an uh, illness that they all suffered with. Um, they had diabetes, um, too. And uh, they were to the extent of needing uh, dialysis. And dialysis, unfortunately, is a medical condition um, from having, you know, kidney failure that impacts you a lot more at the holidays than people know. Um, it weakens and wears the system down. And at Thanksgiving, the week before and the week of, they would be limited in their uh, dialysis visits and their body would become so weak, their blood pressure would, you know, um, it would run low daily. A lot of times they had to be hospitalized. And because of that, they were starting to heal by the time they came into Christmas. And so now Christmas, as well as New Year's, they're going to be on another shortened uh, schedule. And again, it weakens them to the point where sometimes recovery is almost impossible, especially after years of that. You're going along, you're doing well, and then your body has to recover from those, you know, two back-to-back -back sessions, it's a lot on them. And my father didn't want to do home dialysis because he was scared that he wouldn't be as clean as he needed to be with you know cleaning the parts as if he went to a dialysis unit. Um, home dialysis is something that's done daily as well, and it definitely impact, uh, impacts your way of life, especially if you're someone that's on the go and things. So there are a lot of decisions that need to be made the unfortunate aspect is uh, their decisions were made, their body was weakened, and each in succession through, you know, whichever year passed on at Christmas. Um, whenever I am back home, if there is a Christmas uh, celebration or mention, uh, I get told a lot. I just don't understand how your family ever went on to continue celebrating Christmas. Um, and I'll, I'll say... For my family, it became a time of love 
It became a time of remembrance, truly became a time of remembrance. And it also became a way of tradition. And I think that that is what got them through and what caused them to look forward to it more and more every year. So that's what I wanted to kind of talk to everyone about. I was really shocked when I asked my son what was his most memorable Christmas. And he told me that it was that year. Um, and the reason why I was shocked is because I just wanted to get them away from thinking about my dad. I wanted, we had such profound tradition with him. And the kids could tell you, oh yeah, we're going to call him at such and such. Even my daughter, who was seven, you know, could tell you what time we were supposed to make a, the call, how long we were going to be, let's set it up. I mean, she could hook up the uh, camera to the internet feed so that, you know, he could watch them make cookies. He could watch them while they watched a show together. Um, the tradition was that profound. I'm out here on the West Coast. He's all the way home on the East Coast. So it became profound. Um, and because of that, I decided that we're going to start some of our own traditions. And I'm going to go over those with you today. Hopefully you and your family are sitting around and you're enjoying some of your traditions. Justin, when you think about your friends at work or your uh, co-workers, um, what are some of the traditions that uh, they talk about? They just like talking about what they're about to eat after. Uh, <laughs> they, you know, open their presents. Okay, so food. Uh, food is definitely a great tradition. Obviously, um, you know, it's, a, it's a, a time where people come together. They enjoy, you know, a recipe or two. Um, the men are waiting off. They get to watch sports. Sports are huge on Thanksgiving Day and on Christmas Day. Um, so it is a great time for family to come together and a great time for them to enjoy food. Justin, what do you remember? Like, what's a meal that we've had that you might recall? I think the year that we made, like, you know, chicken, mashed potatoes, greens, macaroni and cheese, all that. Okay. So just for you guys, um, we don't have a, a huge um, like food-based uh, tradition when it comes to Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, and the reason is my grandmother, she uh, grew up on a reservation, and she is Native American, and my grandmother is my mom's mom. However, she came and she stayed with me and my uh, family after I got married. And just the stories that she told us and how, you know, uh, life was when she was growing up on the reservation gave me a newfound perspective. Although I grew up with my father and his side of the family and I understood uh, Thanksgiving and we had a great time. Um, sometime when I was a teenager, that kind of fell off. Um, I went off to college, you know, and then I, um, got, I met my husband and we got married. And uh, when it came time to start our own tradition, um, we didn't really fall upon too much of a Thanksgiving one. Um, and yeah, it was mainly, you know, out of respect for my grandmother, because like I said, a lot of the things that she had told me about the way that uh, she grew up considering Thanksgiving um, was, you know, was near and dear to my heart. Um, while, you know, there was nobody in my family and her family immediately impacted by it, I think it's just a recognition of it and a cognizance of it that, you know, kind of kept me from, you know, making it an epic uh, time. I will enjoy, you know, Thanksgiving. I, I get um, extensions and invitations all the time. Come over. Oh, you know, just come over. We just want to see you. And I don't have any, you know, issue with that. I'll help. I'll bring a dish. But I just don't have my own internal family uh, tradition. Um, and that's the reason. Um, but, you know, in the last couple of years, I have told my kids, you know, I'll, I'll make something. I'll I'll grab a turkey leg or chicken leg and I'll throw it in and they have something to kind of nibble on that weekend. We still don't really have a tradition tradition um, too much over uh, like Thanksgiving dinner. We sit down, we say a prayer and things of that nature. We have been invited along. Uh, I have a friend 
and she was just starting her family. She's a single mom, and she definitely embraced us and asked for us to join her and her child. Um, and we sort of created a family in, in that regard uh, to where I do feel like um, that might be a tradition that I would really embrace and I, I'm ready to uh, explore and maybe expand on that a lot more. Kind of moving over from um, there, anything else about the holiday, maybe Thanksgiving, Christmas holiday uh, that you uh, can think of, Justin, that's, that your friends feel are impactful? Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might be different, you know, for a young boy than it is for young girls. You know, we romanticize everything. One of the things that I hear so much talk about is the ugly sweater contest. Um, and they'll have like an ugly sweater day and things of that nature. And it seems like that's really taken off. Do you have any friends that kind of talk about things that they've received that they did not enjoy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Give me an example. Um, one of my friends, I think they, uh, I think it was like back in like senior year of high school. Okay. It was, uh, it's like when everybody, you know, comes back from uh, Christmas break and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Uh, they was, um, one of my friends, they had said that they got like, like the ugliest set of clothes that they <laughs> ever had, uh ever gotten. Unattractive clothing, huh? Mm -hmm. Who got it for them? Uh, they said their grandparents. Grandparents. Grandparents have no style at all. None that are relative to a youthful person. You know, your grandmother, she can make sure that her outfits match, her shoes, you know, go with the outfit, and she's comfortable. Uh, but, But that doesn't mean that when, you know, they send you a Christmas gift, that you're getting exactly what you, you know, wanted and things. So that's always a good, you know, um, a good thing to consider when you're giving your gifts is, uh, is it matching with the time? Um, the unfortunate part is, you know, maybe, you know, asking to do a Christmas list or, you know, what's on the Christmas list. One thing that um, I will point out is, I will ask because I don't I, I don't like to waste money. So even if I were to buy someone a gift that um, you know they they would appreciate and say thank you for, yeah. I I don't want to sit in a closet, you know. Yeah. And I feel like that's the concept behind the ugly sweater um, craze. You know, there were so many people. Sorry about that getting um, gifts that they thought were like unattractive, ugly sweaters, if you will, that it became like a phenomena, you know? Yeah. And there's this new commercial on TV and it's with um, like Grover and um, Kermit. <laughs> and I think Kermit says, I got this great ugly sweater. And Grover says, wait a minute, wait a minute, go, go back. And he says, I, and he says, no, 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 after that. God, and he says, no, no, after that, you know, before, you know, then he goes to sweater. He says, before that, you know, and he says, great. And then Grover's like waiting for a minute. And he says, okay, okay. And like, there's, <laughs> even though you don't see it on Kermit's face, it's almost like a look of relief. Because <laughs> he didn't have to get to the part where he said ugly, you know. So we don't know if we give you a gift and it's unattractive. We don't know it, you know, unless you specifically said, I would like a sweater for the ugly sweater contest. You know, then we know to get you just some crazy stuff from the Salvation Army, you know, because I'm not buying any brand new crazy sweater outfit. Um, although I know a lot of people are because I see them in the stores now. Mm -mm. So that's something that I think is really big. Um, that's a crazy tradition that I've noticed that, that's grown what um what is another tradition or anything else that you might hear people talking about other than food you know and other than receiving unattractive gifts from like a grandparent or an outdated auntie uh, i really don't have nothing <laughs> everyone that i know really just 
talks about their gifts and food. The gifts and food. Yeah. I agree with that. I do agree with that. Some of the things that I will say that I hear people talk about, besides the ugly sweater contest, um, are the in-laws. And that probably is why, you you know, obviously you don't know a lot of married people. <laughs> you better not. <laughs> so um, I do, I hear a lot of people uh, talking about, you know, their in-laws and things. And all oh, the in-laws are going to be coming over. And they don't say it with the, you know. They won't say it with the, <laughs> they don't, they don't say it like they don't it's say it like they happy about it. <laughs> exactly. They don't say it like uh, it's about to be the best time. So um, in laws, you know, and those family members that just won't go home. Those are you know the stories that I hear about all the time. Someone comes back from their break at work, and uh, they've been gone. They whoo, I sure couldn't wait to get back. And I'll be like, why? What happened? My mother-in-law, you know, it's always the mother-in-law, you know, or someone has a sister that has a big mouth and won't stop in the kitchen talking to you about, oh, you shouldn't baste it like that. Oh, well, back in my day, we cooked it like that, you know, like your household has to run as their household. So those are the stories that I hear about all the time, you know, and I get such a kick out of it. I, I'll, I'll go get my popcorn. And I'll be like, no, 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 no. I want to hear this. I want to. I had a friend. I'm not gonna name any names in case they're, you know, subscribers. But I had a friend, and uh, the friend would come back from uh, any type of holiday and could run down how their parent treated each of them. It was two of them, and although they were the more successful of the siblings. There was like a comparison all the time about, well, you know, such and such, such and such wouldn't have done it like that. And so <laughs> my contribution as a friend was, I understand. I would feel the same way. Perhaps you should point it out. Start pointing out, you know, those it might not be the best time to do it at a holiday where the family is sitting around hanging out. But I told my friend um, point it out. You're doing well. They're not. You have this accomplishment. They don't. The next time there is a comparison, start pointing out those negatives. And the friend did. And it wasn't good. It wasn't good. <laughs> but it made for great, funny laughter when they returned from work. The mayhem ensued. It should have been a movie. <laughs> Oh, um, uh, I can't because I'll use the name, so <laughs> I can't say. Um, but um, <laughs> it it definitely would it wouldn't have been family oriented. <laughs> but um, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, family sometimes is all we have, and um, while they may be disappointing, you know, um, embrace them for you know their funny quirkiness. And use it as a funny memory. Because the one thing that I could remember is how funny uh, this friend would relate the story. Every time they went home for a holiday, I couldn't wait to hear the mayhem ensue. <laughs> the way that they related the story was so hilarious. And when they come back and told me they got kicked out the house for bringing up, oh, how dare you? So you're going to throw your accomplishments. <laughs> yes, things like that still happen. Even in, this was 2018 at the time, even in 2018. So I really, you know, apologize if you're out there and you happen to catch this uh, premiere. I apologize if my contribution to your story caused you to go home and set that out there like that. I'm sure you added a little more angst than there needed to be, <laughs> which is probably what got you put out the house that day. But, um, you know, I would have took my paycheck and all of my contribute. Look at me. I'm still, I'm still adding fuel to the fire. Mm -hmm. I took my paycheck and all my contribution, packed up the car and headed on back to Beverly, just like the hillbillies. <laughs> 
I would not have stuck around. That's just for me. But I don't suggest everybody have a holiday like that. Keep in mind, I keep telling you guys, I've, you know, built up this, you know, independent family tradition for me and my kids. So that means I don't have a lot of people coming around. <laughs> I can do Christmas the way I want um, because of it, though. Kind of moving over from there. With that said, I wanted to start talking about how we do our uh, Christmas tradition. And I'm going to start off with what is the first thing when it comes to Christmas holiday that you feel that we focus on? I think just uh, quality time with family. Quality time with family is critical. It's very important. So I start off my holiday like I'm in retail. My holiday starts November 1st. And it starts November 1st because I want to get the full value of the holiday every day that I can. And it starts the day after the last holiday, just like they do in the stores. So we get out there, we get our, our decorations, we start trying to put them up. Um, whether they're horrible, whether they are gaudy, they're going up. There have been some years where I've been able to get in and I've been able to do some decorating. But who handles most of the decoration in the house, Justin? My daughter. My daughter handles all of the decoration in the house. My daughter is a thrifter. If you don't know what that means, it's someone who loves to thrift short store shop. Um, so they will put together what I think sometimes are gaudy outfits, which means my decorations sometimes are not the best. She is relentless. And getting to the decorations, I have stopped caring because even if I say, let's alternate, you do the decorations this year, I'll do the decorations next year. She'll say, well, I still want to help. So what's the, what's the point? Because they're still going to have her touch of gaudiness. Well, this is my side. You go over there and decorate over there. Do you ever find yourself, um, when your sister is uh, in control of stuff, do you find yourself just giving up and letting her handle it and have it? I don't even help. <laughs> uh, no, why I is that? Help. <laughs> okay. Well, that is, you know, one of our first traditions. We kick it off November 1st. Um, this year, we started November 1st. We couldn't finish. Um, we ended up having to go to the store. We went November 2nd. And we opted this year. What is missing this year from our uh, traditional Christmas decorations? Our tree. Say that again? Our tree. <laughs> Why is our tree missing? Well, because it caught on fire last time. How many trees have caught on fire? I think we're like two or three. Yes. So I got tired, and perhaps it's just me, because we put our tree on and leave it on. Um, we don't put it on, turn it off at night, go to bed, turn it back on the next day. That is too much work. So I put my tree on, and it stays on until June 7th um, when we turn it off. I mean, not June, January 7th when we turn it off. Um, last year and the year before, two years in a row, while me and Justin were sitting having mother-son time watching a movie, what happened to the tree? Boom. Boom. <laughs> the tree blew up on us. <laughs> the last one, half of the lights were still on. And then you, <laughs> the bottom half of the tree was still lit. The top half of the tree had went poof, and you saw smoke coming out of it. So I took this as a sign because this was the second time. The prior year it went out, it just went boom. We have a train that we run that runs around the tree. We do have a lino train, similar to how my father used to like to do a lino train. Um, we just have our village on a much smaller scale. And so I don't know if it's just too much, you know, power coming from my father's not here to kind of check on that. And I don't have a lot of electronic savviness. Uh, but that was the second year in a row. Uh, different tree. 
after the first one blew up, obviously we had to get the second one. The second one, shame on you. We got it from Big Lots, I think. Shame on Big Lots. Just purchased the trees, brand new. Let me at least get through uh, a season with it. Couldn't get through a season with it. So it blew up and literally in my mind, you know, two strikes, eh, three strikes. I didn't want to get to that. So I said, I'm not doing a tree this year. My daughter is outraged. She is so outraged. Because she's never been around when the tree blew up. <laughs> she has never been around when the tree's blown up. You're right. Um, but she's just outraged and everything is in protest. And, you know, she's, she's vegetarian, so she's missing some protein, I guess. Anyway, she's definitely outraged. And because of that... I went out and bought a four inch tree. I am going to put up on the table in our dining room and she can sit at the table and she can enjoy the four inch tree and put some decorations and things like that on. Hopefully that is a great, you know, uh, compromise because that's as far as I'm willing to go right now. I am, I spend a lot of time it here by the fireplace and obviously the tree used to be to the left of our fireplace similar to a scene in a Chuck Pinson painting um, so our, our tree would be to the left of it and I just really this year I just did not want to take a chance so we'll see we'll definitely see you guys can rein in in the comments obviously I'll probably be enjoying the premiere and I'll try and check with that um, the next tradition, obviously we don't bypass and we don't skip Thanksgiving, although Thanksgiving is not a huge um, holiday that we you know, go all out for. We do have a tradition um, starting with Black Friday uh, for that weekend. We call it our um, eggnog and pie. And Justin, what is our eggnog and pie? What do we do? We just eat, we just eat pie and drink eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> It really is a tradition where we get our eggnog, kind of make sure it's, it's thick, frosty. Um, we do a, um, a toast. Don't forget, we do a toast. Yeah, we do do that. Yeah, we do a toast. Um, we, you know, obviously, it's a kickoff for us to our holiday season. Um, it's the official kickoff because we do go out and we start, you know, shopping officially. We we've gotten our decorations up. We're whistling and hustling about and enjoying, you know, the fact that it's, you know, Christmas is amongst us and that season is about to be here. But Black Friday, Family Day, in some areas, um, really is the kickoff for us. We do start our shopping. For the holiday and what we do is we have our egg knock and pie we do a toast and we start it that day the day after Thanksgiving and we have it all weekend long um, that's also the weekend um, that you know we really get into our Christmas tradition we have the countdown to Christmas that Hallmark has coined um, every year and I believe that started 2008 or 2009 what we have done is our own little spin we, uh, we celebrate African American culture, similar to how we res we're so respectful of our Native American culture. We celebrate African American culture and we do a, um, a tradition of watching um, African American Christmas movies. Justin, what uh, movie do you remember that just you can't wait to see every year? not almost Christmas, but that is a good one. Um, I think Home Alone. <laughs> Home Alone. We've done our Home Alone Christmas tradition. I really do um, love that. Um, the movie is crazy. I love it. So we do have that tradition. We'll um, pick a movie. And for eight weeks, um, we do start to get our Christmas movies in. Um, I like Home Alone. That's a series that I enjoy. I've never seen um, any of the, like, White Christmas. Um, what's the other one? The It's a Wonderful Life. I've never seen any of those uh, traditional Christmas movies. My father, that was something that was of his time and a part of their tradition. 
Um, and I definitely know he finished Christmas with It's a Wonderful Life. And um, I don't remember ever hearing about White Christmas. He might have watched that as well. Not something that I, if, if I did watch it, I wasn't aware that that was the name of the movie. So it still, it happens to be so. I wanted to share with you some of the movies that I watch with my kids. So first up, This Christmas. Justin just mentioned it. It's a movie starring Chris Brown. Funny movie. Definitely funny. Favorite scene in the movie, Justin? I don't know. There's a lot of, uh, I'll say like, Mm, the bar fight. <laughs> what when he when the guy was making eyes at his girlfriend, yeah, the right. wife. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty funny. My favorite scene in the movie, guys. Just so you know, wife caught her husband cheating. She beat him with a belt in the bathroom when he got out the well, shower. Well, actually, whole favorite well, scene in the movie. Well, I can't stop to laughing. Be, to be honest, every year, the first thing that she did do. Put baby oil on the um, bathroom floor. <laughs> I never that forget wondering what she was going to do with that. She put ba- uh, baby oil, crazy. squirted out almost a whole bottle of baby oil on the floor. He gets out. He can't walk because obviously it's slippery. And beat his butt with the belt. Great scene. Very funny. And I can't wait every year. I crack up laughing. One of the other uh, movies that I enjoy, The Perfect Holiday, Gabrielle Union. Um, she's a single mom. She has two kids. Obviously, she's trying to make, you know, life work and things like that at the holidays. Those kind of movies, they touch me. I was a single mom. I just had my father um, to help. And as I said before, when he passed away, um, it was just me and my two kids. And I really, really, really uh, strove at that point to make the holidays just something that they could remember um, with cheer, you know, it didn't bring them sad, it, uh, sad times. It, uh, it wasn't a, a time of remembrance, you know, in a bad way, but a remembrance in exciting and in a fun way. And I think I've done a great job of that. Next up that we also watch is the last holiday with Queen Latifah. Um, great movie. She thinks that she's passing away. And so she starts to get her, her final wishes and her life in order. Great uh, movie to see, you know, what you would do um, if you had the chance to close it out the way that you wanted. She took her money out the bank and did what she wanted, and I would have done that also. She left a little behind for her sister. Um, Sorry, sis, but I don't know if I would do that. (laughs) Um, I earned it. I got this much time to spend it. I I think I need to spend it. (laughs) So she definitely did that great, you know, movie. Movie that you guys all probably remember really well is The Preacher's Wife with Whitney Houston starring um, Denzel Washington um, as well as, um, I think his name is Courtney Vance. Um, He's married to Angela Bassett. So, great movie, great concept. I loved it. Um, uh, Older movie, it's been a while, um, and I think my kids have only watched this movie with me once or twice. A Diva's Christmas Carol with Vanessa Williams, that was also a favorite, loved it. Coming into some of the newer movies, you guys will probably remember Medea's Christmas with Tyler Perry's uh, character, Medea. That was pretty funny. And I do like that movie. I like to get a chuckle um, and have a good time laughing. You know, quick, easy, simple, fun. It's holiday time. You know, we come into it. We can't wait. We get our popcorn, things of that nature. So kind of moving over from there, one of our final and newest movies that we've added to our um, season is uh, it's called Almost Christmas. Very good movie. There's also a cheating scene in this movie that's hilarious but a little more serious um, than the, the first movie. And it's just funny, you know. Obviously, these movies are designed to be able to poke fun at, you know, Christmas catastrophe, and it definitely happens. Scene in the movie where the gentleman is up on the roof. My father used to get up on the roof when we were young. He would put a Santa suit on, 
and he would get up on the roof. And we we had a set of reindeer um, that he, he would put up there, and it would make it look like Santa is on the roof having a difficult time with the reindeer. Obviously, my aunts, they would have us, and we're trying to hurry into the house at, you know, at that time, and He's up there trying to fiddle with them and things like that. And we're like, we got to get in here and get to bed. We got to get to sleep because Santa's on the roof. And he looked like he about to fall and bust his ass. But let's, let's get, that'll give us some. <laughs> uh, I used to think that all the time. Santa going to break his butt one year. Um, <laughs> so me and my brother, we would get in, we'd get in the house. There was a couple of times I heard like banging around and things like that. Obvious. My dad was very tall. He's, um, six, six five and clumsy. So the banging was, it was true and honest. <laughs> and, uh, I just remember, you know, what that, you know, was like and things like that. So when I watch these movies, it does, it takes me back to a time um, of remembrance. And again, I feel like that's what Christmas really is all about. So kind of moving over from there, one of the other things that we kind of look forward to is um, what we do when it comes to Christmas week. Um, building up, obviously, we're always, you know, trying to shop and we're trying to get the best deal. As the kids have gotten older, you know, we all have a list and things like that. And we can see what we can do about picking items on the list and trying to get them um, opened. Um, I always try, I try my hardest to get my kids everything that they ask for on their list. I have really good kids and my kids don't really ask for a lot of things. What did you ask for this year, Justin? Nothing but underwear and socks. What did you ask for last year, Justin? The same thing. <laughs> Why do you think that you only want those items, Justin? Because I probably would never buy them for myself. There we go, Justin. My daughter asked for hair ribbons. She asked for some hair bows to put her hair up. Um, and loafers. Oh, and some loafers. Yeah, the loafers, the kind, she doesn't like the kind that you put the penny in, just the kind that kind of narrow, you know, flats. So those are the things that my kids ask for, which is why I always try and get them um, gifts. The year they got iPads, I think they each ask for, they definitely ask for something smaller, but I always try and get them one big gift, and I try and get them, you know, the small gift that they ask for. I, like I said, I tried to create tradition in the face of tragedy to kind of take it away from, you know, what they were doing before and give them an excitement for, you know, what they can look forward to now. And I, I do think that I've done a great job of that. Kind of moving over from there, like I said, I wanted to share our tradition. So now moving up to the week of Christmas, this is where it really gets kind of exciting for us. Once we have uh, moved off of the movies, one of the things that we try to do um, first and foremost is we visit a lot of light shows. Um, what do you, when, when it comes to going to the light show, Justin, what is it that you recall and what do you like the most? The, how the lights are decorated. Like to see how the uh, decorations are? Mm -hmm. How the lights are decorated? Do you have a favorite? Uh, not really. I really like everywhere we went. Like everywhere we go? We do a, almost like a tour of the light show. We go to a place called Mystic Falls. And Mystic Falls is here in Las Vegas. They have not only a beautiful light show, but it is choreographed to Christmas music. There are wild animals that are involved, such as bears and wolves. And I think there is a, um, a tiger um, that's in the show as well. And it is choreographed to water. So the water is choreographed to the music and it's going up. And uh, you can tell, you know, it's choreographed to the Christmas songs. So it's definitely a beautiful show. It is how we kick off our week of Christmas. After um, we, we visit the light show, we start to go into the neighborhoods. We have a few favorite neighborhoods that we visit. And one of the things that I think is very fun, um, we make hot chocolate. And we put it in our thermos, 
and we get out and we walk and enjoy the tour of the lights because driving by is beautiful. But what a lot of people don't realize is a lot of homes, especially if they have flashing lights, they too have choreographed their lights to flicker based on the music that's playing. And so you can only really get that concept if you get out and you do some walking. So we definitely do a tour of the light show um, that week leading up to Christmas. Our second um, Christmas week tradition is we go and visit FOM. What do you like about um, FOM? The chocolate. The chocolate. <laughs> I love the chocolate. Just uh, for anybody that uh, has never been to Vegas, FOM is a chocolate factory. They have a light show outside in the cactus garden of their factory. And a lot of people will go and they'll walk through the cactus, the, uh, cactus garden and they'll look at all the lights and the path ends up right to the entrance of their chocolate factory. And then you can go in and sort of warm up and you can uh, do a tour of how they make chocolate. You come out into their store at the end of the chocolate factory and you can purchase any of the chocolates. They also have uh, great samples that you can taste test. It's a beautiful way to um, incorporate chocolate <laughs> into your, uh, your Christmas uh, tradition. And then when you're exiting the chocolate store outside to the left, sitting on their throne is Who? Santa. It's Santa. Obviously, he, he's not thrilled. He doesn't. <laughs> it's been a long time since he went and sat on Santa Lake. Um, but sitting off to the left on their throne is Santa. And he is co-mingling with all of the fans of chocolate um, and taking all of everyone's last-minute gift requests. It's beautiful. I love it. Love to see him at the end. Um, and so that is our second tradition that we do the week of Christmas. It's a great night. I really enjoy it. Um, and I'm, I'm eagerly looking forward to it this year. Third on our list, and we usually have this. This is like, um, it's usually the eve of Christmas Eve. Um, we are going to one of the 10 Christmas services at our church. Um, we go to Central Christian Church. It's huge here in uh, Las Vegas, and it has a large following. Um, at last count, it probably was over fifteen to 18,000, depending on how many, because we get a lot of visitors. When they come here and they're here over a weekend, they want a church service, they'll go online, they'll see ours, and they'll attend. So... We can have anywhere from 15 to 18,000 visits in any given week. And certainly at the holidays, because of what they put into our productions, um, they definitely have a greater following. What do you remember, Justin, about um, one of the productions? What's the biggest thing you would probably recall? Just um, how they sung the songs. I love how they sing the songs. Um, so we have an actual Christian band, and a lot of them have their own like CDs and music that they've uh, produced um, on their own. Um, they might have left our uh, worship group to pursue maybe a Christian uh, singing career of their own. Um, and so uh, we are well known for uh, some of our um, artists, and it definitely makes for just an exciting time. Um, one of the things that I remember, I thought you would say this because you guys were in so much awe. We had a production one year um, where they did a nativity scene and they used oh, live camel yeah. and that. live sheep. And it was beautiful. And they had um, actual people uh, flying around in the ceiling with like a shimmery, snowy sparkle crinkling down over us as they brought us into like the night and you could smell like winter you could smell we're indoors and i live in vegas and it's like 60 something degrees you know leading up to christmas so the fact that you know they were able to 
simulate this indoors is something that has all i mean this production was beautiful and i think that that is one of the christmas um one of the christmas shows that i will always remember is that production um I, they also did a Frozen one year. Um, I think two years after the first movie, they did more of a Frozen theme, you know, for Christmas. They did like three different themes. They did three different themes. And that one stuck with me also. They did a Star Wars, uh, Frozen, and I forget what the other one was. I think it was like a superhero. Anthem. Some superhero anthem. Yeah, you're right. Um, and so the productions... They're huge, and I like how they encompass the families. They try and get, obviously, they apply a message to it, but they touch not only the families, but the young ones as well. So it's a time of the year where a lot of people are religious, but since this is centrally, you know, like a central Christian base, um, they just, they want to bring people in, and they, I think they do a fine job of connecting it. So... Hats off to them because I really do remember those productions, you know, not overly religious, but I really enjoy adding that aspect every year to our family Christmas, Christmas tradition. Kind of moving over from there, um, and this would be something that we do later that night, the eve of Christmas Eve, um, we have our cookies and reindeer food. Um <laughs> Um, really quickly going to talk about the cookies, but you can tell me, what do you remember about uh, making our reindeer food? We put, uh, I think we just put glitter. <laughs> put glitter in it. Yes. With uh, oats. We take rolled oats. Why do we put, um, why do we use rolled oats? Do you recall? Mm, no. <laughs> why do we use glitter? For the reindeer. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. But, so you do remember the glitter. <laughs> We you we make our reindeer food every year, and we you know we give it to little kids so that they can help with the magic of uh, the reindeer. Um, obviously, the rolled oats are to fill the bellies because they're working hard and they need to eat. They need sustenance, and then we add a little cinnamon to make the rolled oats uh, taste great. Little nutmeg so the rolled oats taste great. And then we add glitter. And the glitter, when it's mixed with the reindeer food, it simply helps the reindeer fly. They're able to take off with no problems after eating our concoction of reindeer food. Yes, that is a recipe that you too can use. And once you sprinkle it on the path that the reindeer will come on when they come to your home, you will definitely see that it helps them because they're a little tired. They're a little weary once they pull in. You know, especially where we live. We lived in a hood and we was in an apartment and we was on the bottom floor. And so they had to come into the parking lot just a, a particular way because I know they might not be landing on the roof of this apartment. It's a flat roof, you know, and on top of that, the people that lived upstairs, they wasn't the best people. So I don't know if Santa was paying them a visit. But there was he was definitely coming to our home and things like that. So what I will say, if there's any little kids listening, you know, with their family and things like that, mom and dad, make sure you go out and you kind of kick it about. You got to kick it about before the next day or, you know, you'll still see the path and all of that. But other than that, back to, you know, you got to go out and you sprinkle the reindeer food along the path that they will land they will eat the reindeer food while Santa's inside you know, distributing the gifts, okay? So make sure you guys incorporate that. That was a fun tradition. That is still a tradition that we do today. However, we give the reindeer food, um, which is why we do it the eve of Christmas Eve, so that we can give the pouches. I give it to, like, my um, grandniece. Um, there's a little girl that lives in the same complex as my grandniece and, you know, their neighbors, uh, little kids and things so that they have something exciting to look forward to. So that takes us over to, um, Thanksgiving, I mean, uh, Christmas Eve. So on Christmas Eve, everyone all have 
a tr different tradition. Have you ever talked to your friends about what they do the night before Thanksgiving? I mean, why do I keep saying Thanksgiving like we do anything? <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever talked to any of your friends about the things that they do the night before Christmas? Um, not really. No, not really. <laughs> I mean, they, honestly, they um, what they tell me all they do is just really relax. Kind of relax and wait? Mm -hmm. Yeah, watch movies. Yeah, I know a lot of people that they, they kick it off. That's when they start to do their movie, like, marathons and things. We've already started because we'll do um, a movie on Friday and a movie on Saturday night or a movie on Sunday night. We've already, you know, been in the midst of that. But a lot of people, they wait, you know, till the eve of Christmas Eve or actually Christmas Eve to do that. No worries. That's still a great tradition, definitely. I like how we, you know, kind of scrunch it all in to those, you know, the, those four days before Christmas and then boom we even have you know traditions on that day because as you guys get older when it comes to you know being able to start our tradition on November 1st and you have your own household and you have your own family we may not be able to do all of that you know what I'm saying yeah. but we can always definitely start on the you know the 20th and you guys come home and we you know do our same traditions leading up to that you know what i mean yeah so the day so thanksgiving eve is really about me and whatever family i have around i go to my brother's house and they have what we call their pajama jammy jam <laughs> and it is so cute and uh they get um similar pajamas and they all have you know this household, they have on these pajamas. That household, if they're there, they have these pajamas. And everyone kind of dresses so that you know which household they come from. Um, and we have a great time. Not only are we sitting around, you know, in our, our pajamas, but we do our family gift exchange that night. So if I'm getting anything for the house of my brother, you know, we extend that that day. We don't, you know, wait till Christmas or afterwards and things. Um, we play board games. Who doesn't enjoy board games and things? Everyone enjoys categories and charades. Um, this new craze that's taken over since all the kids are adult now. What's that game that you guys play? Um, Cards Against Humanity. Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> that has taken over the last few, like three years, um, where <laughs> every family gathering, we are playing Cards Against Humanity. Everyone's laughing and chuckling beautiful tradition. I love it and I hope that it doesn't go anywhere. Um, we also have karaoke. We all enjoy singing karaoke. My daughter retired from singing. She was on, um, on the verge of uh, signing um, and getting a music career up and running. And um, You pushed. <laughs> I think I pushed her too hard and I think that there were some disappointments with um, with some expectations from her if she were going into a girls group, you know, that she did not want to commit to. And she ended up retiring. She has since um, a couple of months ago announced that she believes she's going to come out of retirement. And she started writing again. And she is back or on the path of trying to pursue, you know, her music as a career. Um, and we'll see. We'll see where that goes. However, when it comes to singing karaoke, no one ever wants to sing after her. So we all have to get out there and we all have to pick our song and get our singing out and enjoy She's ourselves. Basically like the last one. She's always got to be the last one because no one wants to go after her. Um, and we definitely don't want her kicking anything off and things. Um, the good news about that is we always go caroling. I call it caroling in the hood um, because we lived in apartment complex and stuff. And although we stayed away from um, like a few blocks away from the projects, we would go into the projects and uh, had no problems and no qualms kind of knocking on doors and singing. <laughs> and it would be funny, you know, we're knocking on the door and we're singing, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We're being festive and we're being excited. And we go, honey, who the hell is that at the door? You know, what's going on over there? Who is that singing? What's that racket? So we enjoy <laughs> uh, going against the norm. And I will say that <laughs> it, had the, it had the desired effect 
obviously we were trying to just get people excited about the holiday and share, you know, Christmas joy and Christmas spirit in our own way. Um, and what I liked about it is people end up embracing it. They end up laughing and joking and, oh, that was cute. What made y'all decide to do stuff like that? So I really enjoyed that aspect of our night as well. Um, as I am getting older <laughs> and I am unfamiliar because obviously I've moved away. I've done better for myself. So I'm unfamiliar with the surroundings. You know, I'm not as, you know, eager to kind of run and go knock on doors. I still would like a little more familiarity, but it is something that brought us a lot of joy. It was very, very fun and something that I do hope that we can continue to, you know, try and incorporate into our Christmas Eve tradition. Then we come home, and what do we do when we get home from um, Uncle Mike's? We download the Santa Tracker. <laughs> we download the Santa Tracker. <laughs> I think, to be honest, that this Santa Tracker brings me more, jo more joy than it brings you guys. But it's not going away. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since I discovered the Santa Tracker, uh, we download it onto our phones or our devices, whichever the kids have, and we track where Santa is at that given time, that given moment, and when he should have arrived in our area. Um, obviously, the goal is so that the little ones could have been off to bed well in time for Santa to have arrived and gone and the milk and cookies could have been um, eaten. So that is the whole goal because, you know, Santa has a lot of milk and cookies that he has to eat and we have to make sure that we give him a good variety. We don't want to give him the same thing that he's going to get at another house that we just left, things of that nature. So we download the Santa tracker. We know where he is, when he's coming, and we should be long asleep, nestled in our bed by the time that he arrives based on the Santa tracker. But Santa get here too soon sometimes. So I need Santa, you know, put the bricks on um, because sometimes, you know, these kids, when they get to telling time and things like that, they be up and they be in the room, they be giggling and stuff. And one year... Not only have I heard Santa hurt themselves, but one year, my kids heard Santa hurt himself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Tell me about that. <laughs> I just hear a bunch of noise <laughs> coming from the living room. <laughs> I woke up like I woke up like out of the middle of my sleep and opened my door. I ain't seen nothing. Like, he fast. <laughs> he fast. He was behind the door, breathing, <laughs> trying to keep you guys from me. Uh, Santa fell real hard into the wall, tripped and fell. All I heard was, <laughs> was crazy. And the next day, the kids were talking about. I said, I said. Santa Mom. had a hard time last night. I said, Mom. Night. I said, Mom, did you hear? I was like, Ma, did you hear somebody fall? She was like, yeah. I said, I think I saw Santa low key. She was like, did you see a red and white? Uh, I was like, yeah. Santa fell hard that year. Really hard. So. I literally said, I hope he ain't mad. Oh. So, um, the tracker, the tracker tr is, you know, is a great, it, it's a great invention. It definitely adds a lot of fun for us. Um, like I said, it's a lot of work trying to make sure that you're on task with the tracker, but I definitely think if you have little ones, it is an excellent tradition to, to kind of, um, to incorporate. Next, after that, we go to sleep. And we wake up and yay, it's Christmas Day, which is today. And so for us, we always have a big gift opening ceremony. And we make sure that we uh, take the time to thank everyone uh, for, you know, what 
uh, they've helped us accomplish. Uh, we also, you know, recognize what we are grateful for. Um, we talk a little bit about what we hope um, we will see the following year, what changes in the new year we look forward to. Um, and then after that, um, we do about um, a 25 to 30 minute video on each person um, because we always want to be able to have something to look back over. Um, it's nice, you know, throughout the year we take photos and every once in a while we'll take a quick video selfie and things, but it really is nice to have that time where you're opening a gift, you thank someone, answer a few questions, and it's memorialized right there. And you, you know you're going on camera. We're not looking our best because it's just family and loved ones that's just going to see this. So we're not filtering out the muffin handles on the sides of our pants and, you know, uh, reducing the third chin that we have. You know, we are in our element as we look to our loved ones. So that's something that I really appreciate. After that, we have our big breakfast. And after our big breakfast, we head to the movies. 